Hey, welcome to the Friday edition of Bike Tricks Live. I guess they're all Friday editions, but welcome to our Broadway showroom here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. With me today is Roshan, and behind us is something I am so excited about. These have been in the works for how long? A couple of years now. A couple yeah, of years been going hard. through prototypes and testing and Oh, designing, these are so cool, you're not even ready, but let's hop right in. All right, so Roshan, what's behind us? What is this? What's so going this on? is our newest line of bikes. Uh, we're calling it Monte Capro. And uh, yeah, they're full suspension mountain bike, carbon fiber frames, fully loaded. It's not for the casual rider. It's... No, and uh, Monte Capro sounds a little Italian. What's it mean? Monte means mountain and Capro means goat. So it's like a mountain goat. That's awesome. So it looks like we can do some sweet, sweet climbs in these. Uh, all right, so you said carbon fiber frame. Yes. Not carbon print, carbon no. fiber, the whole frame. Yes, so the entire frame, uh, it, all of our other bikes that we have in stock that we've been selling for years are all made with uh, aluminum. Uh, they're 6061 aluminum that's you know hydroformed and then the bikes built, uh, frames are built with those. These are a brand new line of bikes that uh, we're doing with complete carbon fiber. So they're like, you know, carbon fiber sheets that is laid according to a particular way and then it's, uh, it's baked, made into that shape. So when these things are, you know, they're, they're much lighter than aluminum and much more rigid. So they're, they're like really nice ride uh, quality for riding. That's awesome. And speaking of weight, like we were transporting these over here to the showroom for filming today, lifting them in and out of your truck. How much does this weigh? I think the heaviest, the fatter, we have two different versions of this Monte Capro. Uh, this is the Monte Capro Ultra, so it comes with the Ultra motor. We have two different versions. One's the fat tire version. This is a 26 by 4.8, like really fat, Maxxis tires with sun wrinkle rims. And then we have the Boost version, which has got like a Duroc rims with uh, a Boost configuration for the front and back. Nice. Um, now for weight, the fat tire one we weighted and it was right around 25 kilograms or 55 pounds. And, and that's uh, you know, with the battery taken off because yeah. battery is removable from the bottom here. Uh, it's got a little, you know, guard plate, unlock it, battery pops out and battery is about eight to 10 pounds, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, it's a 48 volt, 17 and a half amp nice. hour. So it's a pretty large battery That's for a, a carbon range. fiber bike. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so 35 pounds. That's awesome. I'm like so, so, yeah, lifting these in and out of the truck was so much easier than even lifting my step through in and out of a vehicle. So. Uh, folks who are looking for a lightweight, lighter weight e-bike, especially one made for some adventures, the Monte Capro Ultra. So let's dig in on the two different configurations. So you mentioned this blue one here, which looks so good. These colors came out amazing. I'm like, let's just take a second to appreciate the decals. Yeah, the, so the, and these are not glued on, right? So they're painted in. So they're like a really nice quality, done from factory. There's like a gloss black cutouts on the outside, matte blue on the, uh, you know, uh, for the frame color, it's matte blue and the logos are kind of like satin, kind of a, a yeah. logo, satin, glossy kind of a logo. Uh, we try to make all the lines really simple, uh, but also it's, uh, you know, it, it looks fast standing still. Yeah, and, and it, it is fast, so. It's got yeah. some movement just in the details. It, it looks so sharp. So we've got the fat model in front of us. It has the 26 by four inch fat tires. 4.8. 4.8, good catch. And the RockShock Renegade, nope, sorry, RST, RST Renegade, Renegade. Yep. front fork. And then we have a mid suspension fork, kind of on an angle. In the FS Pro, we saw that one going up and down. So can you tell me a little bit about the suspension? Yeah, so, well, uh, disclaimer, I am not a suspension engineer. Uh, I am an engineer, but not with uh, suspension is not my expertise. So we actually hired uh, a bunch of engineers that, ha that do this for a living. Oh, cool. And uh, that's one of the things that really stands out with this bike design is the suspension geometry is just awesome. Like yeah. we, uh, there's, a, there's a video coming. Uh, I don't recommend you do, try to do that video at home. There's somebody that, uh, you know, Corey, one of our local uh, professionals here, he took this one of these bikes on a 30 feet jump, like 30 foot jump and a couple of times, he didn't make it. You oh. know, like, like, so that was like the crash testing for our mm -hmm. frames and we tested the hell out of them and I'm, I'm so happy to, uh, to release this to the public. So with this fat tire bike, uh, the fat tire version, the front fork is a RST Renegade uh, mm -hmm. air fork with 120 millimeters of travel. Sweet. And then the rear is a RockShox uh, fork, uh, RockShox uh, shock 
with 210 millimeters of travel. Nice. Uh, so lots of travel. It's like a nice cushy suspension. Uh, of course, it comes with the ultra motor with the latest canvas protocol. Uh, so it's a little more smooth and refined than the, than the previous version. All steel gears inside. Mm. Comes with SRAM 11 speed uh, for the derailleur and cassette and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Sunringle rims. So these are like really nice rims. Uh, there are, uh, you know, they've got cutouts in them to just save a little bit more weight on mm -hmm. there. Uh, and then Maxxis tires, these are really grippy. So if you're riding in like loose sand, snow, all those conditions like today that we have yeah, in Saskatchewan here. Yeah, it's today. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty awesome bike. So we've spec'd it out with uh, also the brakes. Uh, you know, if you're going fast, you gotta be able to stop. Mm -hmm. These are the quad piston Tektro Dorado brakes. Uh, Sweet. So they come standard on this bike. And I noticed they got the 203 millimeter rotors to go with them. Exactly, yeah. Uh, larger the rotor, more more cooling, better for you. Uh, so yeah, the larger 203 millimeter rotors through axle front and back so that's a uh, 150 millimeter through axle in the front once it 150 by 12 or no 150 by 15 I think yeah 15 nice. and the rear is a 197 by 12 so that's a uh, through axle is essentially the hub mm -hmm. where there's a solid axle that goes through and everything's nice and stiff in the back there that's amazing so just circling back to these cutouts specifically on the fat tire bike I'm noticing some coordination here that looks so cool. And so we are gonna have the bike in a handful of colors. Are we gonna see coordination across? The yeah, colors? you know, normally I would have said yes, for sure. We're gonna have like but everything matching, right now. but it's a pain in the ass to get a lot of parts right now. So yeah. we have to, you know, be creative. We'll try our best to match those cutouts, but if not, we won't make it like obnoxious. We won't right. be like, oh, let's put like, you know, green cutouts, bright green cutouts on a red bike or something. Yeah. No. I mean, we'll, we'll try and match it. If not, we'll go with black. If you're getting one for Christmas, that might be okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, you do you, but we'll do our best. But we all know the state of the industry right now. It can be kind of tough. Um, but and, if, we, and if you, you want one of those Christmas special bikes, let us know. You know, who knows? Send we might... us an email. See what we can do. No promises, but we'll try. Exactly. Um, yeah, so these look super slick. And as you're just listing off all of the parts that are on this bike, all I'm thinking is like higher end, higher end, performance, performance, performance. This is a bike made to perform. That's correct. Yeah, like w w one of the things that when people see this, like, you know, hardcore uh, mountain, mountain bikers, they see this and they're like, oh, why is the stem uh, so high up on this, uh, on the steerer tube? Well, the thing is, yes, it's a professional bike, but we want to make sure that, that the rider can customize the bike as much as he can. So we left some extra spaces in there. So if they decide that, oh, this is too high, you can always like pop these out, cut the steerer tube, put another star nut in there and bam, you install it. But because once you install it short, then you can't extend it unless you put an extender. Doesn't look that good on a high-end bike. So which is why we did that. And yes, we try to put as many high-end components as possible on this bike. Um, so a comparable bike to this, when you're buying it from a, from a you know, much bigger brand that sells through bike shops, mm -hmm. they're, they're looking at retailing around $8,000, you know, eight to $9,000. Wow. And, uh, and we're gonna come in, uh, you know, lower than that, be not because we've skimped on the parts, but because we have a better distribution model. You know, we make That's them, awesome. we sell them, we don't, you know, sell them through uh, a bunch of middlemen. We, we do have some selective dealers yeah. that we work with, uh, and they've been like extremely good with their service, and they don't say like, oh, I need like 40% cut or nothing <laughs> like that. So yeah, our dealer family is fantastic. Exactly, so that's why we're able to come in uh, on a price point on this bike that's uh, much lower than a, co a competition. For the prices, stay tuned and check on the website. They're coming. Uh, yeah, I'm so stoked. So we've got this fat tire version, um, and we've also got a boost model, but before we do, I just wanna, we're just talking about performance, and so in CX, we get a lot of people who want a mid-suspension bike like this or the FS Pro because it's more comfortable. These aren't, okay, technically they're comfortable for that, but that's not what that's really built for. It is built for performance, for keeping the back end of your bike on the trail as you're ripping down the Monty. The yeah, Monty. yeah, well, the great thing with this is that uh, uh, with that rear suspension, you know, the, the wheels keep moving, but yeah. your body doesn't move as much, exactly. right? Because it absorbs. And, and a lot of people use that for commuting. They, they yeah. say, hey, I'd like to commute and my roads suck or I want to take the trails uh, where, you know, take the adventurous path to, sure. uh, to their work. And sure enough, you know, this the FS great. bikes perform great for that. Especially uh, on Saskatchewan roads. Yes, uh, maybe, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> Saskatoon. Yeah. yeah, especially in a couple months once this snow is all gone. Um, absolutely. All right, so I want to talk about the boost model which is we have right here in yellow and it's got the 27 and a half by three inch tires 
Tell me what's different. So the key difference between both of these are we try to keep the geometry as, as similar as possible. Um, but the, the key difference is that the rear triangle is narrower. So basically, the rear triangle is this part over here. It's a little narrower, so it only fits a, up to a 3.2 inch tire. Okay. Uh, so this is a 2.8. So 2.8, people refer to it as a 3 inch. So that's the, the uh, you know, it's like a mountain bike boost tire. You could go with a smaller tire, you know, thinner tire if you want sure. that. Uh, the rims are, are thinner. And then the axles. So that's the big difference is that because this is a boost, uh, mm -hmm. these axles are not as wide as the fat tire version. Yeah. Um, so on these ones, uh, the, the front is a 110 and the back is a 145. So they're like a boost spec and these, uh, you know, the, there's a lot more boost components available on the market than fat tire bikes. Gotcha. So for people that don't really want the fat tire version, they could always get this one. Now, there is an advantage of getting the fat tire model though, which is that we were one of the first ones on the market to actually have a bunch of fat tire bikes. And because our bikes were mid drive, we started selling wheel sets yep. that were like where the hubs are made for fat tire bikes, but the wheels may be boost uh, like, or, or like 27 and yeah. a half by three. So we have wheel sets available for this bike that are essentially 27 and a half by three, uh, you know, rims and, and tires and the hubs meet the spec of the bike. So it's a 150 front and 197 rear. Sweet. So if you're looking for something pretty versatile all season, maybe ride fat in the winter and thinner tires in not winter. If you want something with that sort of interchangeability, start with the fat model, because if you start with the boost, you can't go bigger. You can't go any, any fatter tire than that one. Excellent. So the advantage to the thinner tire, probably a little more agile downhill, probably great for commuting. You can find yeah, that's, commuter tires. Yeah, that's too. exactly it, right? The biggest advantages of these uh, tires are that they roll a little bit easier. So Sweet. lesser surface contacting the road, so it rolls a little easier. You get better you know, mileage, and mm -hmm. so better distance. And then it also, uh, it, it's good for riding on the road. Like it doesn't yeah. feel like, you know, too much. Like with these fat tire bikes, if you let the air out a little bit, then it feels really draggy. Mm -hmm. And that's great for winter yep. or when you're riding in the, in the sand and stuff. Yes. But it's, uh, it, it reduces efficiency a lot when you're mm -hmm. riding on the road. You can bump up the air quite a bit or get street tires that are the size and then it looks really cool and it still rolls yeah. pretty good. But uh, uh, that's the primary advantage. Also, because of the fat tires, these weigh more. They, exactly. you know, I think the whole wheel setup is close to about five pounds heavier than a, uh, than a you know, boost setup or, or thinner wheels. So there it's all, you know, if you're, if you're big about weight, then this might be the, the model to go. That checks out. All right, so being that these are performance mountain bikes, there are a few things that you're going to notice are not on them. Yes. Well, let's talk about some of those because one of these things we get asked about often, particularly for the FS Pro, and I just, I'm gonna bring it up. What's the deal with kickstands and full suspension and mountain bikes? So you'll notice uh, w with people that own mountain bikes, kickstand is like a love-hate relationship. We, a lot of people love it because you can just stand your bike up and put the kickstand on and mm -hmm. it's great. You know, so you don't have to like hold it or lean it against something. But a lot of people hate it because when you're riding on the trails, this thing keeps rattling around, yep. it gets caught on stuff, and it actually, it's a little bit of a danger. It's a, it's a little bit of a hazard. So, which is the reason why if you look online or in any, most bike shops, you'll see that a lot of the high performance full suspension bikes do not come with kickstands. Um, and the other reason is with uh, a, a carbon fiber frame like this, having a kickstand clamped on here adds too much undue stress in one location. Yeah. And uh, that's the reason that we're not specking these with kickstands. So if you want a kickstand on a full suspension bike, you should probably get the aluminum FS version and then get some kickstands. Uh, there's lots available on the market yeah. that you can get that, but these don't come with uh, kickstands. The second thing is fenders. Um, yeah. You'll see that uh, these forks have a really tight fit. Uh, with the tires, there's like my fingers won't even go through there, uh, fat fingers. But <laughs> but so so there's really not much room for fenders on here. Uh, there are some third-party like universal fenders you can mm -hmm. get that attach to the down tube, so it'll basically protect you from the splashes that you get in your face. Yeah. Uh, but generally, people that are riding these on the trails, they have like a full face helmet, yes. goggles, and all the all the gear where they expect it to get dirty, uh, and that's part of the fun, you know. Yeah. So so these bikes do not come with fenders uh, for the rear you could get like a mud hugger fender mm -hmm. mud hugger is a company out of UK that we, yeah. we worked with for several years uh, they sell some fenders that fit some fat bikes so it basically attaches on with zip ties 
and does its job. I feel like the fender that we currently have on the beast, the one that clamps around the seat post yeah. and comes out, that would work for a rear fender. But like you're saying, there's not a ton of options, but well, most also the, go with them. And, and the one that attaches a seat post is not really recommended for a full suspension bike because you have your fender here and your wheel keeps moving up and down. Good call. So you're going to keep tapping that fender and then have lots it's of trouble. It's a flapping tail so, back there. Yeah, so it's not a good idea. If you had to get something, I would get something that attaches onto the rear triangle. So it just stays put and moves with the wheel. Good to um, know. Oh, you could also get something that goes right behind your seat. Yeah. Uh, there are some vendors that go uh, that have make those which attach right under the seat there yeah. and that stays with the seat that might work too uh, but we're not supplying any fenders or, uh, or racks. rack yeah fenders rear rack or kickstands with these bikes yeah i wouldn't suggest a rack on this one anyway like i know a lot of people wanted them on fs pros but with a full suspension bike it's so tough to get one that's either that's going to work with the suspension and isn't going to limit it or bounce your stuff everywhere and then you're just having a yard sale so with this one i mean backpacks are great exactly you don't really yeah. need a fender or a rack for these guys yeah for these kind of bikes i think it's always uh better to have like a backpack if you're carrying a few things uh you could get there are some third party things you can get for mounting stuff on the front yeah on your handlebar or some on your fork too but uh, i think back backpack is probably the best you could get a little pouch that attaches right on the on the frame itself it's just right there yep i think those work okay and uh, other than that, uh, yeah, uh, they don't come standard with them. Awesome. So I want to talk about the batteries for just a second. So we've got an internal kind of hidden battery. Now we've seen these before on a few of our bikes, like the Duo family, the Beast, even like the Swift Light. Those all have kind of the same idea where they sit flush with the frame and hide on the inside. This one, is it interchangeable? Like. I have a duo, you have one of these. Could we swap batteries? Uh, the Monocapro line is unfortunately not compatible with the duos. Uh, we had to go with a much smaller form factor of batteries. Uh, the, just the form factor, the shape of the tube that goes in here had to be a little different because those that are made for the duos are not available for carbon fiber bikes, gotcha. uh, which is why this is a little bit different. They're not cross compatible. Uh, okay. But that said, uh, we figured that most people who have these bikes, they're not, they, they would probably have a whole Monte Capro line. They're not yeah. expecting to, to swap batteries. Cool. And so we mentioned earlier that it's a 48 volt, 17.5 amp hour, which is going to give us pretty great range. Actually. Yeah. You know, range is always one of those tricky things, so right? Tough. Like, like we, uh, uh, I actually showed it to one of our staff that a fully charged battery, I could be on the, the same rider, mm -hmm. same battery, and I could ride it without changing any gears, just throttle all the time and kill it in like 10 miles. Yeah. You know, whereas the same rider, I could like ride it properly, like use my assist properly, use my gears properly and end up getting like 40 to 50 miles. Nice. So the only variable there is the it's way that I've ridden, exactly. you know? So, so that's why range is always a tricky thing. Uh, the more you, you know, use the, the more effort you get the motor to put out, the lesser range you get. Right. Okay. And so just with the batteries, they do lock up into the frame. I can see the keys, uh, sticking out on the side of this one. A little birdie told me, unlike our other bikes, you need to turn a key to start this one. Well, next to the key, there's a little button. So you gotta like turn that that's on your power. and off for gotcha. the main power. And then you power it on from the display. That's correct, yeah. And so with the ultra motor, we've got our DPC-18 display like we've seen on the FS Pro and some of the duos and things as well. So a nice full color display. It's got the eco mode and the sport mode and the five levels of assist. People love this display. Yes. I love this display. I have this one. It's great. It's fantastic. All right. And so only a single battery setup as well. That's correct. Yeah. So it only comes with a single battery. It does not support a dual battery. Like I said, you know, I'm not the, sure the, where you'd stick one, honestly. Yeah, there's not <laughs> much room there. And uh, uh, there's enough room in the triangle to somewhat fit a little bo water bottle kind of thing, but Maybe. a very tiny one. Yeah. Um, but the point of that, the point of this bike is that, you know, get out on the trails, ride for a couple of hours, try, you know, the steepest hills and yeah. all that stuff and then get back. And doing that with uh with dual batteries just adds more weight and brings the you know it's it's not meant for that purpose yeah, so you could sure. always carry a second battery in like a hydration pack that you carry yeah. in a backpack and we have folks that, that works do that. we have lots of people who um, do that and so 48 17 do we have it in a 52 volt do we have it in a 21 amp hour or at, at this time it? we've squeezed as much cells as possible in that space and yeah. that is a 4817. Like and that's that. That's for it. Now. So like to, to get any larger, we gotta either the technology needs to change 
come on Tesla or, <laughs> no, or Panasonic or something, or we got to go with a bigger, uh, you know, bigger frame. And we didn't awesome. want to do that because the point of this is to be, keep it like n nice and nimble. Keep it light, keep it nimble, keep it funky, keep it fresh, have some fun. Yeah, These exactly. just look like so much fun and just the coolest bikes we've, I say this every time we come out with new bikes, these are the coolest bikes. But like these are the coolest bikes. They're always the coolest bikes. But it's also not the first iteration of the Monte Capro. No, yeah, like the Monte Capro, we had a full suspension bike way back, I think about six years ago. Yeah. We did a small batch of them and uh, really good reviews and stuff from them. And then, uh, you know, things went, uh, we got so busy with all the other lines of bikes that we kind of dropped that one. And then now I think the market's mature that uh, a lot of people are looking for full suspension yeah. bikes and we thought it's a perfect time to reintroduce it. And I think it gave you more than enough time to give the Monte Capro because I've seen what the original looks like. There's one kicking around. It was a cool bike. I liked the color, but it doesn't look like this. Like it's, you can it's see, nowhere close to this. You can right? see where they have their similarities with like the shock position, that kind of thing. But like when we talk about a glow up, this is a glow up. Like yeah, this was like a complete so cool. redesign. Like all of the the pivot points on the on the suspension, all the pivots in the uh, in, in in all of the frame components, and everything was redesigned nice. specifically for us, right? So this is like a, a brand new design, and and we've we've actually the factory that we work with in in China and Taiwan to produce them, they've got a patent on the design. Uh, for us, so they're not allowed to sell it also elsewhere. So it's like a, it's a pretty unique, uh, you know, design just for us, and I love it that. works that great. Is so good. So you're not gonna. I don't want to see any emails saying this just looks like the one that so and so makes. How is it? Well, different? people are still gonna say that, they're right? They're still gonna say it. Yeah, it's but... like, oh, look at this Toyota Tercel. That looks just like a Porsche. Well, it's well, not. <laughs> Maybe it's from not the, the moon. Same. <laughs> if you look at it from far back, sure, but when you get up and close, you're gonna want to get up and close. These are so. Cool. And so we have a blue one and we have a yellow one. Do there's also a white one. Uh, and then there is a, what is the other color, Alex? Black. Yeah, there's a black, white, red. red, yellow, blue. Lots of freaking colors. That's awesome. Okay, so recently in like the last video you guessed it on, we talked about custom colors on the FS Pro. And we said, hey, you know, on a lot of our lineup, if you see a different bike you like and you would like it in a custom color, just reach out and we'll work with you. Yeah. This is an exception. It is, yes, because the custom colors that we're doing, we've been kind of, we've been uh, powder coating them. So powder coating is a uh, uh, special process where they, you know, uh, stick these aluminum frames into like an electrostatic free zone, put some powder over it so the powder kind of sticks to the metal and then they bake it, which is when the, the, the powder becomes liquid and fuses to the, to the metal. Unfortunately, that's not available for carbon fiber frames yet. I feel like double baking a carbon fiber frame is just not a good idea, given how you explained they were made at the beginning of this. Exactly, these frames are already baked when they had They're to come done. out as a, as a uh, you know, as a frame. So They're fresh uh, and toasty and ready to go. Yeah, double baked beans are good, but double baked <laughs> carbon fiber frames, <laughs> probably not a, not a good time. idea. Yeah. So then these are painted or is the carbon fiber this color? These are painted, yeah. Fantastic, so if it gets a nick, Touch up paint. For sure. Sweet. We'll try and get make sure we have some, but as with all bikes, sometimes we don't have enough on hand or it hasn't come in yet. So if you need it, let us know. But honestly, chicks dig scars and these are adventure bikes and any Nick is gonna tell the story of like that sweet ride you took it down. So like, Well, this bike, this is the very bike that uh, Corey has been riding around and trying to trash for the past like few weeks. And then this is the same one that he took that 30 feet Leap. This one went off the jumps? Yeah, exactly. That's the one. And okay. I can't even see any scratches on it. You and could have just told me this came out of the box. It does not look like it's, you know, bailed off a 30 foot jump. Yeah, this was the one that uh, I think a couple of days ago was uh, up 30 foot in the air. That's amazing. Okay, there was just like a little dust on it. And I just assumed that was from the truck <laughs> bringing it over. But it's held so up. So we've done our due diligence trying yeah. to beat the hell out of these bikes. And they see, you know, they, they perform just as we expect, if not more. And uh, we can be happier to, to bring like super high performance bikes to people that can at, at, at an affordable price. Now, affordable is always like a, a subjective a term, term yeah. uh, but if you know what you're getting, then it's a heck of a deal. You know, if you don't, then it might seem a little pricey, sure. but we have lots of other models for, for those uh, Absolutely, kind of riders. Absolutely, we do. And for the price point, like you said, to be announced, keep an eye on the website, you are getting a lot of bike and a lot of fun. I. If I had unlimited money, I'd have like six to 12 to and space. 15 and <laughs> space of our bikes. Some of them based on colors, some of them based on just 
how freaking cool they are. I'm so stoked to see um, the adventures that our customers and our riders take these out on because we do have a lot of folks who ride like out in BC and through California and down in Colorado, like mountainous places or even, you know, take a fat tire one out on a beach. Exactly. Rip it through the sand. I want to see it. Show us those videos. That would be fantastic. Yeah, and these are great for, uh, you know, beachy areas where, uh, you know, you're not, you don't have to worry about the frames getting anodized yeah. and, uh, and affected by the salt, you Ooh, know, so. I didn't even think of that. One. That is so smart. Yeah, with the aluminum frame bikes, so that salty stuff, you got to make sure you wipe it off every time because it can get in there just like on your car. Yeah, well, this, this, just the chains are still steel and the sprockets yeah. are steel, so you got to make sure that those areas are kept clean and greased uh, if you're riding in a, in a lot of salty areas. Fantastic. Um, but otherwise, yeah, they're super fun, uh, high performance bikes that, uh, I don't even feel like getting off of it. Like once you get on there, it's like yeah. so much fun. Well, and I've seen you ripping around between our facilities the last few weeks before the snow on these. And yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try to get in as much rides as I can yeah, in like, there. Oh, you know? I think so, I need to go. Uh, yeah, I definitely have to go to that. Bye. <laughs> oh, my meeting is in the other place. Oh, for Let's sure. Back. <laughs> Wasn't that a video chat? No. <laughs> All right. Have fun. Awesome. Okay. So when are these launching? So we're going to uh, have a VIP list on our website. Uh, so we're, you know, inviting people to join the list. And Perfect. as soon as we launch, they're the first ones that are going to get notified awesome. because we only have a limited quantity of these. Yes. Uh, we're, we're not making a whole crazy run of them. Okay. They're like limited numbers. So because of that, we want to give uh, people who are interested the first opportunity to buy it, especially the guys who follow us. So, uh, you know, th there's going to be a, a landing page on our website where okay. once you go in there, you can read up on, on most of the specs and then it'll also tell you like sign up here for, our, for joining our VIP list. Perfect. And as soon as we launch, we will tell them first. And then after that, we'll launch it on our website and uh, probably looking at launching in the next like two to three weeks. Awesome. These are going to be, of course, first come, first serve. Get that order in as soon as it launches. We will not take pre-orders until it launches. So do not email me and ask. You sign up for that list just like everybody else, friend. I feel like these are going to go quick. We, I, I was talking to our R&D guys and they've already got like four or five people on the, you know, wait list. They're like, oh, we don't care what it is. We'll want it. You know, so Perfect. we do have some of those customers that love our products and yeah. love our company and love the support that they're getting that they always want to, you know, support us with the, with the best product we release. And uh, uh, they're, they're already, you know, on the list. So, yeah, if you want one, get on the list. Get on that list. VIPs. And in terms of delivery, the first batch of these would be shipping. We're trying to ship for end of this year. So like close to Christmas time, mm -hmm. but I don't want to make promises because if people say, oh, this is my Christmas gift and I know there's delays of the port all the time now and it doesn't yeah. make it, then we're going to get slammed with emails and curses. Yeah. I don't want that. So I'm saying that we would likely ship the first batch by January. It could be sooner, but January sure. is what we're aiming for. And I mean, if you want to get one for someone for Christmas, cool. Just know that it probably won't be there in time. I have found just from past years, uh, folks who buy gifts like, like this for Christmas, um, like a card that yeah. has a photo in it. And so you're, you're supposed to, you're, whoever you're getting it for is like, oh, you just got me a card. And then they open it up and it just creates so much more hype. And then you get like a second Christmas yeah, waiting I, for it to arrive. I remember that. I think we made a few cards for customers yeah. who, who gifted to their wives. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, here, can you just take a picture of this thing? And, and, do, and we actually wrote a custom message on yeah. it, got all of our signatures on there. And that was their gift hanging on the Christmas tree. Yeah, or and a then, stocking, whatever. Yeah, and actually. then sure enough, open it up and there's your gift and it's coming. Yeah, you it's you in the mail. second Christmas that way. All the anticipation. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Amp it up. So if you were wanting one of these, sign up for that list. We're trying to ship end of December. We will do our best. But hey, if you've been around, you know what's up with the industry and how that's been going. But we're in the home stretch, I think, for these for the most part. And we'll just keep you all posted. And it'll be worth it, 100% worth getting them in you know, January, whenever. And if you really want a bike by Christmas, we have so many other bikes in stock. So many. So uh, like when all of our competitors are kind of running out of stock, we have, we have run out of stock in some models, yep. but we have so many other models you can buy we from. We do have a lot so. of great selection right now. And so there's something out there. If you want something for Christmas, reach out, let us know. We'll see what we can work out. All right, so Monte Capro Ultra, super sweet, super great. Like, looks fantastic, it's going to perform fantastic. Is there anything else you want to say about these bikes before we go? No, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just really excited uh, to see what, where our riders are going to go. And that's actually, I think, the biggest thing within our company is when we see 
all these customers send us pictures and, and videos and yeah, the messages of group. the owners group on Facebook where people are riding and yeah, love uh, what you guys are doing and sharing uh, you know your rides with us and and thanks for supporting us you know we're a small business we're not one of those big players making tens of thousands of bikes we're a small person uh, you know small company which means that we're able to talk to you one-on-one -on -one. when you have an issue you can email Shannon you can email me we have a whole team of 12 people that uh, are just dedicated for customer service and then there's like you know several others like mechanics and all these guys who work yeah. I think we're, we're up to like what 50 some people right now uh, and 55 uh, 56 last count I don't know I've been taking numbers for the holiday party and I think that's where we're at so. exactly yeah. so so we're all here to help you out right so uh, you know we, we trust that we've we put our best foot forward to make a, an awesome product and uh, we just hope that uh, you know you give us an opportunity to, uh, to get you a bike of your dreams yeah awesome well thanks so much for joining me today and just going over these amazing rides i'm so stoked to see people on these and sharing their rides if you have any questions you know throw them down there send them out um, to us at support at biketricks.com we'll be happy to answer you sign up for that vip list and i will catch you next friday see you guys